Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome to Posing Lane. So a few weeks ago, I had this like flashback and I was like, is this a memory? Is this real? Or am I just thinking this? And I remembered back in like middle school in sixth grade, I used to make stickers out of puffy paint. And I was like, is that still a thing? Like, can I make that now? So today I'm going to try to make stickers with puffy paint. I was thinking about what stickers I could make and I decided to go for fruit because they're pretty simple, easy shapes. And also I love most fruits. Something interesting about me is I'm like a texture person and I can't do grainy textures. I love a really good watermelon that's crisp. When you cut it open and you bite into it, there's just this like bite to it. And it's just so cool and refreshing on a hot summer day, but I can't do it if it's grainy. But man, if it's perfect, it's perfect. I bought the paint for today at Hobby Lobby. And one thing about Hobby Lobby is they rotate their sales. So if something's not on sale now, it's probably gonna be on sale later. So when I got this, every Tulip product was on sale. But then another time I went, all wearable art, which is considered wearable art, was on sale. So I got it 40% off. So I encourage you, if you're gonna go shop for this, go when there's a sale, never pay full price. One thing I've noticed though, for like the Hobby Lobby employees is they have to know every code. They are like typing away. There's no scanner for them to scan it. I don't know how I could do that. I don't think I could remember all those codes. For the paint, I got slick paint. There was several different kinds of puffy paint and I just got the slick paint because I didn't want it to puff up too much. And I already had some orange just in my paint storage, so I grabbed that out too because that'll be great for making oranges. And then I was wanting to kind of test run this a little bit before, so I tried wax paper and I tried parchment paper and just did a blob on them to see like which one would peel off the easiest. And with the wax paper, my blob ripped a lot easier and I, with this, I was able to actually peel it off. So I recommend doing parchment paper and mine I found at Walmart and I've also found it at the dollar store. So it's just in the baking aisle if you need it. First, we're gonna get our paint and then we're going to get out our parchment paper and just get a big enough piece so that we have room to make all of our stickers. I noticed that it was kind of curling up on the edges, so I just flipped it over so that it won't be trying to roll up on me the whole time I'm making the stickers. We're making an orange slice first. So I'm going to do a half circle shape to make it look just like a real orange slice would look. I'm going to do the edges first and then fill it in. That way I kind of know the shape that I want it to be. Make sure to make a thick enough layer when you're putting down the puffy paint so that when you go to peel it off, it's not gonna rip. Once the orange is filled in all the way, I took white and drew triangles over the top to make it look like segments. And I just kind of made the edges and the tips look more rounded because I felt like that looked more realistic. I'm making the lemon slice the same way and doing all the same steps. You could also make a lime slice or like blood orange or grapefruit and make a really cute citrus theme. I just didn't have those colors. Use the tip of the puffy paint to kind of move the paint around. I noticed sometimes I was squeezing too much out and so I just use the tip to move it around. using the green to make the rind of a watermelon. And then I'm going to fill it in with the red. The green is so bright, I love it. The seeds of a watermelon are kind of like a teardrop shape kind of thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. So I'm gonna squeeze more of the paint at first and then go more light with it towards the tip. I'm just placing these seeds randomly around wherever I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. 
now I'm making a kiwi and I'm gonna make two of them just in case because when I peel it off, I don't want one to rip and I only had one and then I don't even have a kiwi sticker. I'm making a circle with the green so it looks just kind of like the way a kiwi slice would look like if I just cut it open. The circle of seeds are gonna go around the center and then I'm just going to put a drop of white in the middle. This is the last color we haven't used. It's this really pretty blue. And we're gonna be making some really juicy, plump blueberries. I'm gonna do a circle with the blue, and then I'll add some white for depth. I want it to kind of look like there's light hitting it, so it's kind of like a glare. That's kind of the look I'm going for. And then I'm gonna add little leaves to the top. Just wanna make sure that they're thick enough so that when we peel it off, it comes off with the rest of the blueberry. I've noticed that strawberries are kind of like a heart shape. So I'm going to draw out a heart shape first and then fill it in with the red. Then I'll add leaves, making sure that they're at least thick enough so that they'll come off when I peel it off. And then I'm just gonna add yellow seeds randomly around onto the strawberry. I love strawberry desserts, especially in the summer. I think really why I love them so much is because of the whipped cream. It's kind of like this delivery system and an excuse to eat a bunch of whipped cream. My son loves trying new fruits that he's never had before. And when I say like never had before, he had only really had pretty basic things like bananas, strawberries, apples. So nothing real crazy. And this week I went to the grocery store. I found cherries for him. They were fresh and in season. I brought him a whole bag of cherries back. And I think he thought it was gonna be like the cherries that you find on top of like a sundae which aren't those called like marchino cherries or something like that. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right. But he thought they were gonna be super sweet and kind of syrupy like that. So when he bit into a cherry and it was really kind of tangy and, and sour, he was kind of in shock and like, you did not bring me like a real cherry. So I had to explain to him what, no, no, these are actually what real cherries taste like. And at first he was kind of skeptical, but now almost the whole bag is eaten. So I think that he really enjoyed it. He's tried mangoes, kiwis, peaches, plums, and we even bought the Starbucks dragon fruit drink because it had pieces of dragon fruit in it and I couldn't find a dragon fruit at my store. But I would love like some other suggestions for maybe something that you found that he would really like. I'm making two cherries because I really want to make sure that at least one of them turns out good. And for the cherry, I'm just doing a red circle and filling it in. Then I'll add a stem and I'm gonna make sure that it's thick enough and wide enough so that it doesn't break. I'm adding a little white on this one too to kind of give it some depth and dimension. My favorite apple is the Granny Smith. I love how crisp and tart it is. So I'm gonna do a green one first. I tried to just make a green circle and put a stem on it to make a green apple and it really just looks like a blob. I think if I make it look like the apple's been cut in half, it's gonna look a lot better. So I'm gonna do a green outline, making sure that it's thick enough that we see the green and fill it in with white. Then I'm gonna add seeds to the middle and a stem. I'm also gonna make a red apple because I feel like that's so iconic, like a classic red apple. I don't really eat red ones because again, like the watermelon, it's something with the texture, but I just love how cute it looks, especially like in back to school time with decorations with apples on it. Some of the stickers were small and some of them were large and that's okay. There's really no rules here. We're really just doing this to have fun. What is your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit is pineapple. I would love to go to like Hawaii and get a really super fresh pineapple. That would be like my dream. I could eat pineapple every day and I would never get sick of it. I love how it's sweet, but it's also kind of tart. And I love things that are kind of tart and sweet. Anything sweet and sour is basically my favorite. Like Sour Patch Kids are my favorite candy. And I'm pretty sure pineapple is my favorite flavor. I'm letting it dry overnight. I kind of noticed that some of the stickers I made had a lot more paint and were thicker than other ones. So they're all gonna have varying dry times 
I just want to really make sure that everything's dry that I made before I try to peel it off. We're ready to peel them off. And my plan for peeling them off is just to go really slowly and start on the edge and just kind of be patient so that I don't accidentally rip it or break it as I'm peeling it off. I'm so glad we made extras of everything so that if something accidentally messes up, I'm not too nervous about peeling it off. I wish I could make these smell. Could you imagine if all of these smelled like the different fruits that I made? Oh yum, that would be so good. Do you remember those like markers that were like permanent markers and they all had different scents and the black smelled like licorice, but then there was also like the pink one and the red one and one was like strawberry. I realized I collected actually a lot of things when I was a kid. I know I've talked about how I collected rocks before and erasers, but I also had a sticker book when I was a kid and whenever I'd get a sticker, it would go in my sticker book. And I had some pretty cool ones in there. I had ones from NASA, from different space shuttles, and I had a new kids on the block one. And then I had ones with googly eyes that would move around. And then I also had these ones that were like pigs in on motorcycles and wearing like motorcycle gear and they smelled like bacon, which was like, now that I'm thinking about it, pretty weird. So I have stuck these to a glass calendar that I have. I've also tried these on my refrigerator and they stick to it. And also my Ikea side table and they stick great to that. So they're not just like real stickers that you get, you know, on the sticker aisle because they don't have a sticky back to them, but they're kind of tacky, so they'll just stick to things when you put them on. And it really reminds me of like a flashback to um, color forms when I was a kid. You'd get like a set and have something smooth to put them on and you could move them around and rearrange them. And these do that, they just peel off and you can put them back on and put them anywhere you want to. I love that because it's not like a giant sticker disaster where you put it on and you can never get it off. But I want to warn you, if you put it onto like a window on a really hot day, it may actually start to melt because I tried that with something and it started to melt. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me this week and I can't wait to see you next week.